Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on um, task number three, where you are going to take flags you have drawn with inline SVG and move them to external files. And uh, the first time I asked people to do this, I got about a 50% hit rate in terms of some people thought it was perfectly straightforward and some people um, simply couldn't get it to work without help. And um, I, think, I think there are a couple of parts to that. You definitely have to find the right page um, in the textbook to explain what you need to do as you do this work. And it's actually kind of a crufty example full of things that you don't actually need. So, um, so there's stuff in here you absolutely have to have, and then there's stuff in here that will make no difference. And I think it makes more sense for me to just go ahead and walk you through the process and show you what's essential for success. So um, do pull out your page 707 in your book. Um, the content of this slide are probably gonna change, uh, but the, the headline should stay the same. Um, once I get done with this video, I will probably rewrite this, the, the body of this slide a little bit. But basically, um, here's what's gonna happen, is I'm gonna go to a REPL, and your version of this, by the time you fork, you're going to have SVG flags in a flex layout. And I'm going to ask you to fork that to create a version of your REPL where we simply do the step of moving those same flags to external files. And um, so mine is, is not exactly the way yours is going to look. I, the only flag I have here is the sample one that I supply you guys. Um, so, but the process is the same. It's made a little bit more complicated by the fact that um, Replit's support for SVG files is, um, is kind of minimal right now. It works with them great as images. It doesn't work with them great when you are trying to create them. And I think there's a step in here that once people got it wrong once, um, they probably freaked and just started trying random things. So this is actually quite simple. Just stick with me. Um, I have a page here where when I run it, okay, I have an, this very simple SVG drawing in line of the Japanese flag, a white rectangle and a red dot. Okay. I want to turn that into an external SVG image. So the first thing I do is create file whose, whose extension is not SVG. Um, and I will, and stick with me here, let me show you how this works. Okay, so I need to move text into a file, an external file. So I'm gonna call this japan.txt for now. Okay, and once I do that, I'm gonna move these lines of SVG markup. I'm, I'm just gonna copy them, I'm not taking them out. And in, in nothing in this step are we changing the H HTML here. We're just using this replit as a container for doing the editing for the flags. So having copied this to the clipboard, I'm going to go over here to the empty txt file and I'm going to save it. Uh, and just because I am that way, I'm also going to um, I'm also going to um, make it move it over so it's up against the left margin. Okay, so at this point, I have the same HTML file I had before. I've got a text file that's got that content in it. And I think this is the thing that people did that that sort of like, doomed them because they just decided this was really hard. Um, it, if all you read is the text in the book, it makes it sound like if I rename this SVG, everything will work. And unfortunately, everything doesn't work. Basically, when the file has the contents of right now and you tell Replit it's an SVG file, Replit doesn't have enough information to process that as an image. So what we need to do is go back, change it back to a TXT file, okay, and then if we consult our manual um, and we look at this page 707, there are a couple of things. 
Um, because this is an XML file, it starts off with some XML business. And although this is not, this first line up here is not absolutely necessary, I think just like we have a line like this at the top of our um, HTML, we should just go ahead and grab it. So I have a PDF version of this doc that makes it easy for me to copy out of it and paste that. Let's see. Okay. That actually goes in this file above the SVG proper. Uh, and that just gives some version information and encoding information to um, the browser. The one line that absolutely is necessary is this, and it takes some parsing of the book because it talks about having these two XML namespace attributes. Um, but then if you read it really, really carefully, it points out that, oops, that the only one you absolutely need is this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab that much text You'll probably have to type it in. And that's an attribute inside the SVG open tag. So I'm just gonna copy that into here. And basically what that does is give the browser the information it needs to parse this separate file. And if I do that, uh, this worked for me before, so let's hope it works for me this time. And I rename that as SVG. Then suddenly the browser Replit, everybody gets together and recognizes this as an image file. So um, that's all you have to do. If you need to make any, um, any changes to that, hopefully your flags are done at the point that you um, start this work. But um, if, you if you need to edit that file, okay, then you just simply can take it out to TXT, make a change, um, and it's interesting. This isn't, this isn't appearing. I think it's probably because it's black. I think when you use it, um, that that text will appear, but we know it's there. So if I go back again, and all I'm doing is playing with this extension, I have my, um, I have my flag. Now for this step, the one that is task three. You'll notice I'm not trying to use those SVG files in the HTML I'm working on. I'm, I'm simply creating a replit where for you guys, you'll have four of these SVG files and I should be able to open up your replit and be able to click on them and see your flags. Okay, hope that helps.